Hello! This is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video in this playlist um, that I still don't know the name for, Building the Brain, a plugin for Grasshopper, Machine Learning. Uh, you probably already have seen the title of the playlist anyway. So what I would like to do in this video is write our first uh, component for the plugin and arguably the most fundamental one, the more core one, which is going to be building a custom HTTP POST request. Or the idea that for the most for most of the APIs that I know of out there in the world, the way you interact with them is using an API, using a POST request, which is a request where you go to a particular URL, like for example here, the OpenAI one, you give it some information, this is called the body of the request, that, that is what you actually post with your request, and some optional authorization information and maybe like a timeout. And then if you hit, if you perform the request, then that information gets sent to the server. And then when it comes back, it comes back in the form of typically a JSON file or some other text file that we can deserialize, for example, in this case, using JSON, and then get this kind of, for example, in this case, a text completion or uh, for a fairy tale, like a princess in a beautiful princess, etc., etc. All right. This will be interesting because if at some point in the plugin we don't have an API for a particular, we don't have a component for a particular API, people will be able to create their custom requests uh, in a manual way. All right. So let's take a look at how would we implement this. Let's start by the beginning. So what I would like to do is I would like to create a component that is going to be a general request to any possible API that we might find out there in the wild. So the goal with this component is that if at some point in the future people don't have the OpenAI component, the IBM Watson or something changes, they have the access to composing a custom request with their own parameters, their own body, etc., etc., so that they can access any API that we may not have developed a specific component for. So in HTTP world, you will see that, for example, here is the API reference for OpenAI. You can see that in the most general terms, when you want to ping the OpenAI API, when you want to basically get a prediction from some AI model that lives inside of OpenAI, what they tell you is that you just need to do a post request to this URL that you have here. And then they give you some documentation about what that request has to look like. The idea is that post requests are basically like, are basically HTTP requests, very similar to the one that you do when in your browser you type youtube.parametriccamp and then you get information. This one is a get request because you're basically saying, give me whatever you got. But post requests are a more, let's say complex version of that where you also go to an URL, in this case, what we call the endpoint, and, but on top of that, you also send some information with the request, like for example, which model you want to use, what is the prompt that you want to take, the temperature, the maximum tokens, et cetera, et cetera. And the server uses that information to customize the response that it gives you back. So we already actually in this channel, we already did a bunch of examples of post requests and how do they look like in Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, and even an implementation that we did for Grasshopper. So we actually wrote a C Sharp script for Grasshopper that does generic HTTP post requests. So if you want to learn more about that, or if you want to see the example of DALI, your a link to this video will probably pop up somewhere in the corner here, right? But what we're going to do now is we're basically going to create a component that can do any post request to any endpoint. This is going to be the goal of this video. All right. Okay. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing that I would like to do is to be very order and very categorical about making sure that everything is in the right place. So to make sure that my OCD is happy, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this utility components uh, or utility comps. And inside of this folder, I'm going to add a new item that is going to be a grasshopper, an empty grasshopper component for Rhino. And the name that I'm going to give the component is going to be HTTP post request component. All right, like that big. All right. And as I do that, 
I do already get the HTTP POST request. I already get a template for the component. We've seen this in previous videos. And because I created a folder, my namespace is also the brain plugin.utility component, which is kind of nice. All right. So let me just uh, make sure that I fill in a bunch of things. So the full name, I like the full name post, and this is going to be create a generic post HTTP post request. And this is going to be synchronous. And I will explain what that means in the future. All right. And then the category is going to be the brain plugin. And the subcategory is going to be utilities, for example. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so then we're going to customize the inputs. What are we going to take as inputs for this general HTTP request? Well, there's a bunch of things that we need to take. So first of all, we need to take the URL or what is typically referred to as the endpoint. All right. So that is the HTTP dot blah, blah, blah. We also need to take, for example, we're going to need to take the body of the request. So that is the information that we're going to be sending with this request. We will need to take, for example, also the content type. So it turns out that with post requests, you need to add to the request a small header that says whether if the body that you're sending is a JSON file, is a text file, is an MP3 file, is an audio file, a video file. There's a lot of different types of requests of information that you can bundle in your request. Okay. So we will also in the future at some point, we will use custom headers. Custom headers are very useful um, for sending additional metadata with your HTTP. But maybe we do this later in time, we're not going to implement that for today for whatever re for reasons that I will explain. And we will want some kind of authentication. So depending on which API you use, you typically have to provide some kind of authentication. Maybe the, the API is free, but if it's not, you need to send your bearer token, some API key, some form of authentication so that the server knows who you are. And then whether if you're authorized or not, and who to bill if it's a paid service, right? And last but not least, we probably want to implement some kind of timeout. What that means is if because requests over the internet take time to execute. They're not immediate. They take time due to network traffic. They take time because the server might be busy fulfilling other requests. So typically what we do is we said, yeah, you know what, if you didn't give me a response after five seconds, I'm just going to cancel the request. I'm not interested. Like I just don't want to wait forever. Okay. So we're going to use this as our initial entry points as the first things, the first few things that we're going to add to the component. So how are we going to do that? Well, the oh, and whether this is very important, and whether if the plugin of the component is active or not. So whether if this is actually performing requests or not. So we're going to add these inputs. Actually, give me one second, I'm going to do this offline. And here you go. So I have created a Boolean parameter for whether if we're sending or not sending information, the default value is going to be false, a text parameter for the endpoint, the URL, another text parameter for the body, a text parameter for the content type, which will typically be text slash HTML application slash JSON. This is actually the default value that I want to give it because for the most part, in our case, most of the body of the requests are always going to be in JSON format, right? I left here a placeholder for custom headers, which I don't really know exactly how, are, how is that going to work. And then a text parameter for the authorization, and which will be some kind of string with the API key, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and an integer value for the timeout with a default value of 10,000 milliseconds. All right. And I also added some, you know, some descriptions, some etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, one thing that I would like to do is that I would like to make sure that the authorization is optional. And because sometimes there might be APIs that don't require that. So in Grasshopper, the way we can do this is we can say, well, um, if this is parameters 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, what I can do is I can say p manager slash uh, in position 4, I want to make this optional. I want to make this parameter, this input parameter optional. 
but I can do this in a little better way because at some point this during development, it might change. It might not be the zero, one or two. So the P manager, when you create a text parameter, it gives you as a, as a, as a, as a return, it gives you an integer of which position this text parameter went into. So what I can do is I can say, uh, give me that integer, integer, you store it in this variable, and then I'm going to use this as the authorization ID. I'm going to use this as the position of the parameter that I want to make optional. All right. Beautiful. And then for the output it's going to be super easy. What I want to do is I just want to offer the response. I just want to say whatever you give me back is going to be a text parameter. Give me that response as an item. All right. Fantastic. So what are we going to do now? I think we actually need to implement the actual HTTP request. For, this, for solving the instance of this component, so for actually performing the request, I have already implemented the boilerplate of retrieving the information from the inputs of the component. So I've created variables for whether if uh, the component is active, the URL, the body, the content type, all of that. I have gotten the data from the input parameters and I have also added like returns in case we don't get the data because that data is mandatory. We can't really work without it, right? This is a very common grasshopper pattern. If you don't remember this, make sure you check our advanced development in grasshopper playlist. There should be a card popping up in the corner somewhere where we talk about all these topics. All right. And then typically something that you want to do before you actually start writing algorithms or doing anything is you want to make some validity checks to make sure that the data that you have is valid and it's good. Right. So for example, something that I may want to do is I want, I may want to check if the URL is valid. So, and actually the, in, <laughs> the autocomplete is already telling me if the URL is, for example, if the URL it's not, if the URL is no, or for example, the URL dot length, the length is zero. If I don't have anything, then I probably want to somehow return, but I want to do it in an elegant way, giving some feedback to the user. So I'm going to say add runtime message and the message level is going to be error, for example. And I'm going to say empty URL so I cannot and I'm going to stop. I'm going to re stop the execution of the component. Nothing is going to happen. All right. So this is typically something that we want to do. All right. So then um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to compose the HTTP request. We're not going to get into the details of how that works. It's kind of a lot, but basically what you want to do is you want to say, I'm going to, the first thing that you want to do is you want to turn the body of the request, which is in whichever format that is coming from Grasshopper. And you want to make sure that you turn it into zeros and ones that you can send across the network. So I'm going to create a variable called data, and that's going to be from the encoding library, which is comes from C sharp. I'm going to take ASCII and I guess encoding is not loaded here. So I'm going to add system text. And from the ASCII, I'm going to get the bytes of our body. All right. So this is basically going to turn and I can just make the explicit. This is going to turn body, which is a string, is going to turn it into a an array of zeros and ones that is going to be sent through the network. OK, I'm going to compose the request. We also saw this in the DALI video if you want to learn more. All right, then I'm going to create the request, which is going to be a web request that I'm going to create from this URL. And I'm going to make sure that this is casted to an HTTP, HTTP web request. All right. And then this will be the type will be an HTTP web request. All right. To this request, we're going to qualify the request. We're going to make sure that it has the exact properties that we want. So the request, for example, the, for example, the method is going to be post because we want uh, sorry, because we want to send information with the request. 
the content type, which you already see, is going to be the content type that we're getting here. And maybe something that I want to do also is I want to make sure that we have some content type. So for example, and content type, and here for content type, which is probably never going to happen because I already have a default value here, but maybe someone just gives it an empty, I don't know. So if content type is null or if zero, then we throw an error. What is the next thing that I want to do? I want to, as you can see already, I want to set the length of the request to the length of the data that I, can, that I parse from the body. And then last but not least, I want to make sure that the timeout is equal to whichever value I am picking up from the parameters, right? And for this one, I don't even need to check if it's null or whatever, just because it's an integer. So the worst thing that can happen is going to be a default value of zero. All right. Now we need to handle uh, authorization or not, because the request will be different whether if it needs to be authorized or not. So, for example, if the authorization token, where are we? The auth if the authorization token is different than null, and the authorization token, the length is greater than zero, then we're going to have to create a request that has an, uh, an authorization header and that has all the other authorization properties. So I'm actually going to copy some boilerplate that I have here, which is that we want to set the expect 100 continue flag to true. Very honestly, I don't really know what this means. <laughs> And the security protocol is going to be TLS, which is a secure protocol, so that no one can sniff our uh, authorization, uh, our request, okay? Um, then another thing that we want to do is we want, in the request, we want to set that authentication must be true. And we probably also want to set, in the request, we want, for the headers, we want to add a new header, which is going to be specifically authorization, authorization, if I type this correctly, and the authorization is going to be the auth token that is going to be provided to by the user. So this is the input that we are getting from the parameters, okay, the authorization. So that is what we do if this request has an authorization, but if it doesn't, then we don't need to do any of this. So what we just need to do is we need to say the credentials are going to be just the default credentials. You saw credentials cache, default credentials. So whatever we get out of the box, we don't need to do anything special. Beautiful. Um, again, we're not going to get into what most of this means, but now that we get this, what we need to do is we need to actually launch that request. The way we launch that request is that we basically create what's called a stream. We open that stream, we launch the request, and we leave that stream open for data to come back from our from the response. All right. How are we doing that? We're going to be using the using keyword, which is basically a way of saying this thing that I'm going to define here, the stream that is going to be a a re oh, sorry a request dot get request stream. I want this variable to make sure that it's properly disposed and garbage collected the moment I finish executing this block. It's just a way of being efficient about memory, making sure that requests don't stay open forever and that not lingering in memory and they don't block any port, etc, etc, all those things. So we get the stream. And then what we do is with the stream, we write uh, we write that data, we write all that data and we from the beginning to the end of the data. So we're basically sending upstream to the request, we're sending all the bytes that we captured, that we um, serialized with our get bytes. So the body was turned into bytes, and then we're sending all those bytes upstream to the server. All right. And once we have that, now we need to wait and listen for a response. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a response string. 
and then I'm going to try and listen to a response from the server. Okay, I want to use a try and catch because there are there are situations where this request might actually fail. It might be a timeout. It may hit a server that doesn't exist, an URL that is not valid. There's many reasons why this may not work out. So I'm going to use try catch so that my component doesn't crash Rhino or doesn't crash Grasshopper. So I'm going to say, I'm going to create a response and that's going to be request.getResponse, get response from the server. All right. And then response is string. So I'm going to turn this, which is right now a web response. I'm going to turn this into a string. So I'm going to say new stream reader, stream reader. I'm going to take from the response. I'm going to take the response stream and I'm going to read to the end. Uh, and then I may need to import stream reader. Yes, I'm going to read the entire thing and turn it into a string. Once I have that, <coughs> excuse me. Actually, I don't know. I'm going to just, I'm going to just response. I'm going to, yes, I'm no, wait, wait, wait. Yes, I'm going to just use the response here. I'm going to save directly to the response. All right. And if it doesn't work, then I need to figure out what happened here. So I need to say, I need to give the user a feedback about what happened. So add runtime document, runtime error, something went wrong. And then I'm going to use x dot message. All right. With, so I'm going to print with also whatever is happening in the exception whatever error message I get from the exception. And I probably want to stop executing the component as well. But if everything went well, now what I want is to output, uh, out, output, I want to output the response out through the component. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say da.set data in the first position and it's going to be data, all right. No, not data, response. Beautiful. So I'm going to save this. First of all, I'm going to build the solution and see if there's any error. It's building, it's building, so it means that everything went well. So it, it looks like from a code standpoint, there's nothing wrong here. So I guess I need to now see if this works. So I'm going to now execute the plugin. And as we saw in the previous video, I already connected this with um, Rhino. So the moment I open this, the moment I hit execute, it opens Rhino right away. I'm gonna open Grasshopper. And I created in the folder, I created this test file called testing workbench, which is a folder that I'm using. And it has these two components that were ones that I prototyped in the, yes. So that's something that I prototyped in the, so now don't, don't mind about this. So, uh, and I can't, yeah. So Victor, hold on, give me a second. Yeah, so these are the two versions of the component that I was prototyping in the previous video that I still have them here, but because I deleted that code, it's not available anymore. Grasshopper doesn't let you, doesn't give you a nice way of clicking and removing these ghost components. But thanks to Victor's plugin, Melano Plus, I have this option to go here to display and clean canvas and remove all those ghost components. Um, good job, Victor. I love that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my brain plugin. All right, not, not this one. So where is here, this one. And you can see that in utilities, I have HTTP post request. So I'm going to drop this here. And in post requests, I have perform the request set URL for the request, body of the request, content type, authorization, etc., etc. So let me plug a few things up here. So I'm going to say send the URL is going to be, for example, the completions API. So the one that I was showing you here for OpenAI. So let's see that. Let's see if we can make like a raw uh, request to 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 OpenAI, right? 
I've created the body of the request. So I've written this JSON file that pings the DaVinci model. So that's GPT-3. Tell me a fairy tale is the prompt and the maximum tokens and the temperature. I'm using the same JSON structure as the body of the request that is specified here in the documentation, right? And then, so I'm going to plug that into the body. The type, you can see that by default, it has application JSON. So I'm going to keep that. I like that. The authorization needs to be some kind of text that is, in this case, is going to be bearer, the word bearer, um, a white space, and then the OpenAI key that I'm getting from a, an environment variable that I have in my system. And if you don't know what this means, you, there is we have a video about how to get your OpenAI key and how to read it from an environment variable in your system. We will probably turn this into a component in our library as well. So get environment variable, right? And, um, and so I'm concatenating both and I have now the bearer token and this, this API, the bearer token and my, the bearer word and my API token. So I'm going to plug this here into authorization and the timeout is going to be five seconds. All right. So right now this is not doing anything. All right. So I don't get anything because it's deactivated, but I'm going to turn this on. All right. And you can see that right now I'm frozen. I can't do anything. Oh, and I got something went wrong. The operations has timed out. So it looks like five seconds is not enough. So I'm going to crank this up to 10 seconds and I'm going to try again. So I'm going to try again and you can see that it's frozen. I can't do anything right now. And What? The operation has timed out? Really? So let me turn this back off. This is very strange. This should be more than enough. So I'm going to allow 25 seconds. All right. So I'm going to do 20 seconds. I'm going to try this on again. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Grasshopper is frozen. And yes, I did get the response. That is strange. It took more than 10 seconds. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. Right? But you can see that I get in return, I get the I get a JSON object with all this information. So I'm going to use the JSON plugin to deserialize the response and then get just the prompt. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess who lived in a castle with her family. Tell me a fairy tale. It looks like this works, all right? So what have we done? We have made a custom, let's call it like a hand brew, like a craft <laughs> request to the OpenAI post, to the OpenAI API, to the completions API. So now we can ask ChatGPT for a bunch of text, correct? And the, because we're doing it raw, because we're customizing all the parameters, we get a response that has the entire JSON response. And then we need to manually deserialize this using some library, using uh, JSON, JSON, et cetera, et cetera. So this works so far. It looks like it works. So we're going to give this a thumbs up for right now. So we have a component that can do post requests. All right. Now there's two things that I would like to improve here. The first one is that as you have seen, post requests actually do take quite some time to execute. It's not nice. In this case, it took 11 seconds. And you can imagine that if we actually create a complicated grasshopper definition where the output of certain of certain components becomes the input of other requests, et cetera, et cetera. And we daisy chain a bunch of this. This may actually take several seconds, if not minutes to execute. And having Grasshopper frozen as this happens is probably not a nice thing. So the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to test a version of this component that instead of doing the request synchronously, which is this idea that the entire execution flow is halted while the request resolves, 
What I would like to do is I would like to implement an asynchronous version that keeps running, keeps Grasshopper alive and responsive while the response resolves. And when the response resolves, this updates and triggers an update chain all the way down. Okay, so that is one thing. And the other thing that we will eventually want to do is that because this particular API is so popular, what I would like to want to do is to create specific Grasshopper components that are specifically designed for the completion API of, of OpenAI, the chat API of OpenAI, the image generation API of OpenAI, and just make life a little easier for people. Under the hood, it's going to be still post requests. It's just that a lot of the information and the body and the parsing of the information, we will do it under the hood in the components so that people's life is a little easier and the information is offered to the user right away. Okay, so those are the two things that we will do eventually further down in this playlist. And I think that the very first one is going to be writing a version of this component that instead of being synchronous and halting the execution of Grasshopper, is going to be asynchronous. And it's going to let me keep interacting with Grasshopper and it's going to trigger an update whenever the response is returned. All right, so let's take a look at what that could look like in the next video, all right? Thank you very much. If you liked this, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like this video, etc., etc. All those things. See you on the next video. Bye bye.